So I'm gonna ask you to take this with a little bit of a grain of salt because I realized that I did just make a video not too long ago about why the Switch isn't my favorite console anymore in this generation because that probably goes to the PlayStation 5 or the Series X. But nonetheless, I'm still pretty excited for the Nintendo Switch OLED, which we are now getting. And while it may not be the Switch Pro that a lot of people were hoping for, I'm still really looking forward to the launch of this system. Because as much as I've talked about not really playing in portable mode that much anymore, it's still nice to know that when I do play in portable mode, the experience is gonna be closer to what I used to get on the original Vita, which had the OLED screen, which I absolutely loved. And the advantages of OLED are pretty numerous. You get deep, inky blacks, you get really vivid colors. And to date, I really don't think there's an LCD experience that's kind of comparable to what you can get from a really high quality OLED screen. So with that in mind, and considering the biggest draws for the OLED Switch is obviously going to be playing it in portable mode, today I thought I would go over 10 different games that I think are going to look absolutely stellar on the Nintendo Switch OLED, and just some of the ones that I'm most looking forward to whenever the system drops this October. And even though the thumbnail showed a bunch of physical games, this first entry I thought I had a physical copy of, apparently I don't, so I'll probably have to spring for the collector's edition for it at some point, which I think you can still get through Fangamer, is Hollow Knight. And the reason that I think Hollow Knight's gonna be such a good choice for the Nintendo Switch OLED to kind of check out what that screen can do is because it is a predominantly very dark game. Now, a lot of Metroidvanias are pretty dark games, but Hollow Knight in particular tends to do a lot of shades of black, gray, blues, purples, and hues like that that you can kind of see on the screen. And I think because it has such a darker aesthetic, the clarity between those different shades is going to be very, very evident compared to what you would normally see on the Nintendo Switch's typical LCD screen. Plus, just personally speaking, I really enjoy playing Metroidvania games in the handheld format, which probably started somewhere around Metroid Fusion or Metroid Zero Mission, I would say. Next up is Doom 64, and kind of in the same vein as Hollow Knight, Doom 64 is a darker, moodier, more atmospheric approach to Doom. Some people not big fans of Doom 64. I enjoyed it when I played it, and I definitely picked up a copy of it before the Switch whenever that became available through limited run games. Now, obviously, there's still plenty of run and gun action to be had in Doom 64, but if you break down Doom's typical game flavors into search and destroy, I think it leans a little bit more hard into search and certainly uh, has level layouts that I think are darker, a little bit more claustrophobic, and I think that's going to translate really well to an OLED screen that can really do those sort of uh, darker shades more justice, I think. Not to mention, I just think that games from the N64 era, once they get kind of remastered and updated just a little bit, tend to look really, really good on the Switch's portable screen as it is, so I imagine that's going to be all the more enhanced once OLED becomes a reality. And while we're on the subject of moody atmospheric shooters, the next entry on my list would definitely be uh, Metro, the double pack for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I've only played a little bit of Metro so far, but very much like Doom 64, it's a dark, moody atmosphere, kind of survival horror-ish kind of first-person shooter. Although naturally the graphics are much improved and it's really impressive how much they were able to get out of porting this game to the Nintendo Switch already. So I think in portable form with the OLED screen, it's actually going to look really, really good. And the thing is some of the graphics in this game, because the environments are so dark, you're often in tunnels or underground and you've got these monsters all over the place. Uh, it is kind of helpful, I think, to have a little bit more detail in those darker environments. So I actually think it's gonna be quite an improvement to play this game portably on the OLED versus the LCD, where it's not just that aesthetically it looks better, but functionally speaking, I think you're gonna have an easier time navigating those environments if you play on the OLED screen. Now kind of stepping away from overt darkness, although there are definitely dark environments in this game, but that's not my primary draw for putting it on this list, would be Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler is a jaw-droppingly gorgeous game that takes that sort of chunky, pixelated 16-bit aesthetic of yesteryear and updates it with the Unreal Engine to also include things like beautiful particle effects and these really vivid colorscapes. And platform preferences aside, I think Octopath Traveler is just one of the prettiest games that I've ever seen, period. Now, I think the RPG format just lends itself particularly well to portable play anyways because of the nature of, you know, sort of randomized battles and how you can sort of pick up, play a little bit, make some progress, and then put it back into sleep mode really, really quickly. But I think that's especially true for Octopath Traveler because it does sort of break up each individual character's stories into just various chapters. So it's got a very sort of segmented, kind of regimented way of kind of doling out the story and experience for each of the individual adventures that you go on. And I think that's going to be a great fit for portable mode. But again, those crispy graphics are gonna look amazing on the OLED. And the soundtrack for Octopath ain't too bad either. It has a variety of like epic sweeping orchestrations that you can enjoy. And I think the improved speakers on the OLED are also gonna lend themselves pretty well to a game like Octopath Traveler, which again, I already think is really well suited to the portable format. But if we're gonna talk about games with stellar music, I absolutely could not leave this one off the list if I'm thinking more in terms of what's gonna take advantage of those new speakers that the Switch has. And I think this kind of does both because it has a dark, moody synthwave kind of aesthetic and a pulse pounding soundtrack that is one of my favorite in video games of all time. And that is Hotline Miami. 
As I already mentioned, Hotline Miami has an amazing soundtrack. If you have the chance, even if you never play the game, you should go check out the soundtrack on YouTube or Spotify or wherever you listen to music and just tell me I'm wrong on this because there are so many just incredible tracks to listen to and it just seems like every song that they chose for this game is an absolute banger. But then also, like Octopath, I think Hotline Miami is really well suited to portable play sessions because the game is so incredibly fast and fluid. You sort of have this top-down view where you're navigating jacket around a variety of interior, super colorful environments. And the thing is, when you die in this game, you immediately jump right back into the action. And I think that makes it ideal for the portable format to begin with. But then again, the fact that it does have this really just vivid synth wave aesthetic and this incredibly kind of dreamy sort of uh, soundtrack to go along with it, these things combined make me exceptionally pumped to check this out on the OLED screen. Next up is kind of a weird one, but personally, I'm just really excited to see how this game looks on the Switch, even though it's kind of an older game and there are definitely other open world games that you could play on the Switch, but I'm gonna go ahead and say Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Again, I realize there are tons of other open world choices that I could have made here. There are obvious candidates like Breath of the Wild, for example, or maybe you could even make the argument for Saints Row the Third, because it was a pretty good port for the Switch. But Black Flag, I'm especially excited to play because it has so many beautiful locales, and while technically it doesn't have the best graphics on offer for an open world you can play on the Switch, artistically speaking, I still think a lot of these environments are gorgeous, and I love that you're not limited to only exploring them in the traditional Assassin's Creed way, but rather you do have the ability to sort of take command of sea vessels, take to the open seas, and just sort of live out that dream of being a pirate. Now I don't know if I would say the open world genre is best experience on a handheld, but I certainly personally enjoy playing open world games on a handheld, because, you know, again, the primary draw of the Switch is that it doesn't have to stay there. Whenever I'm ready to dock it and have some nice couch time in my living room, I can continue my pirate journey there. But whenever I'm just out and about, or if I just want to knock out a few missions before bed, it's going to be really nice to look at a lot of these tropical Caribbean environments in a tasty OLED package. Next up, shifting back to that 16-bit aesthetic a little bit, is a game that I played and enjoyed when it came out a few years ago. Although I did have some issues with some of the game mechanics, although I think they have been patched and updated to be a little bit uh, more approachable, so you don't kind of get stuck, and that is The Mummy Demastered. For me, The Mummy Demastered stands tall as just one of the absolute champions of a movie tie-in game done right. Yes, it's true that the movie wasn't very great, but the fact that they took a hard look at the things that did not work for movie tie-in games in the past and instead decided to go the demastered route, where instead of trying to make a hyper-realistic mummy game that probably wouldn't age very well, they just went straight back to the 16-bit era and created one of the prettiest 16-bit Metroidvania-style games that I've ever seen. And like Hotline Miami, The Mummy Demastered also has an incredible soundtrack of original music, and then they kind of filtered the horror vibe of that music through just like a poppy chiptune sort of presentation, and it sounds incredible, and I bet it's going to sound great on the OLED Switch's speakers as well. Number 8 might not be the most exciting entry on this list, but I am excited to kind of jump back into Super Mario Odyssey and take a look at some of those levels on the OLED screen. And I think Super Mario Odyssey will actually provide a pretty good range of the kind of visuals that you can expect from the OLED screen, and that's because some of the early levels are very monochromatic with a lot of you know, deep blacks, grays, and whites with occasional pops of color, but then later on you've got more vivid and lush environments to explore like the desert level or the forest level or New Donk City, for example. Not to mention Odyssey is just a stellar 3D platformer in its own right, so I won't mind revisiting it since it's been a couple of years, I think, since I played that game. And number 9 is Ori in the Blind Forest. Now I do have Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisps, but I've only spent spent like one or two hours with the first game, so I think this is going to be a really good way to experience it because again, it is a Metroidvania style game, but easily one of the most lush 2D games I think I've ever laid eyes on. So the fact that I haven't spent much time with this game to begin with, despite the fact that I do have the very nice collector's edition of it from I Am 8-Bit, made this a prime candidate for me personally, but again, sort of like Hollow Knight or Octopath Traveler like I mentioned before, it also has a ton of beautiful colors that I think are going to look really just tasty good on that OLED screen. And number 10, unsurprisingly, except for the fact that it didn't even occur to me until somebody pointed it out when I sent out a tweet kind of asking you guys what you thought were some of the best games that would be playable on the OLED Switch is, of course, Metroid Dread. So I spent the past few weeks finally beating Samus Returns on the 2DS, and I'm currently working my way through Super Metroid on the Switch, which means that by the time Dread comes out, I will have beaten all of the 2D Metroids in handheld mode, so that seems like a natural fit for a system that's going to shine the brightest in handheld form. And honestly, Metroid games really provide a great mix of both dark, moody visuals because it's normally a very claustrophobic feel as you're exploring underground caves or space stations, but then you've got a ton of vivid colors as well between the different particle effects on offer with the gear that you use to the Metroids that you hunt down to the natural alien life that you run into as you kind of, you know, navigate the various metroid -y environments. Now, I know there's some debate over whether 2D-style Metroids or the 3D-2D hybrid style of Metroids are better. Personally, I think they're both great, but I do appreciate that when it comes to, like, this 3D-style Metroids, that we're kind of getting with Dread is that they can do some more dramatic camera angles for key moments as the gameplay and narrative develop. And since I think some of those will undoubtedly include a few jump scares, I'm really
really excited to play this in particular in portable mode. I'm not saying that I won't play it in docked mode at all, but honestly, the thought of just laying in bed playing Metroid Dread, a game that is very dark and claustrophobic and really drives home that sci-fi horror feel, I think that's going to be an excellent showcase of what you can get out of this new screen that we're going to get from the OLED Switch when it comes out. All right, and that's it. So those are my 10 picks. The 10th one was provided by you on Twitter when you responded. I have no idea how I didn't think of Metroid Dread, considering I'm super excited for that game, and it drops the same day as the OLED Switch. Just slipped my mind when I was making the list for some reason. But hey, what about you? Are there any games that you would recommend that you think will look particularly tasty on the Switch's new OLED screen when it comes out this October? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time. Take care, and I'll see you next time.